and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a glass reflection using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.4. It's the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial and I'm going to show you this simple yet effective process for creating this reflection effect on your photos. But before we get into that of course I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As usual we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here as well as Project Translate and our Poll of the Week, so check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP Photo Editing from Beginner to Pro Photo Retoucher best-selling course on Udemy. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So here's the main photo I'm going to be using today. This is on Pixabay. As always, I'll include a link to this in the description. And I'm also using this photo here of a skyline. This is a New York skyline. You guys can use whatever photo you'd like. And I just wanted you guys to know that when you're selecting your photos, make sure obviously there's no you know, main window behind the person uh, because we are treating the reflection that we're creating in front of the person as the main window source. If there's another smaller window or whatever behind it, it's fine, but uh, just make sure that the photo makes sense for a reflection effect. And you also want a decent amount of natural lighting on the subject. It doesn't make sense if the natural subject is entirely lit by artificial lighting. So just make sure there's some sort of natural light source or a large light source in front of your subject. So here's the final product here and I'm going to go ahead and start by opening up the base photo of this girl on the phone. So go to file and in my case open recent and I'm going to choose this photo of a woman on the phone. And the next thing I want to do is grab the photo here of the skyline. Now you'll notice that up top here, the dimensions of this photo are 1920 by 1275. So I downloaded the 1920 version from Pixabay. But over here, I just downloaded the 1280 version for this one. The reason I wanted this photo to be smaller is because I wanted to be able to have some flexibility with the photo of the skyline here so I can move it around and position it or scale it if I wanted to. So a cool trick that was brought to my attention by one of my viewers is that you can just click on this tab here and drag it over to your other tab and then go ahead and drop it on your photo and that's something I actually went over in my last tutorial which compares 10 features found in both Photoshop and GIMP. But once I've dropped this photo into my composition, I'm going to come over here, click on this layer here, and you can name this city if you want or skyline or whatever. And then I'm going to change the layer mode to lighten only. And what that's going to do is essentially drop out the darker pixels on our layer. And that way it shows the uh, layer behind it through those darker pixels. And so that's what's going to help us give us that uh, window sort of reflection look. Before I go any further, I do want to grab my move tool and just reposition this. Basically, the girl is at a coffee shop, so you've got to assume she's close to ground level, of course, unless she's on the second floor. But I do want the road to be sort of higher up here, just so it does appear that she's at ground level versus here. It looks like she's sort of high up in the air and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I just drag this so that the road is a little bit higher up here. And then you can uh, center this as well if you want, or just move it a little bit. What I'm looking for is I don't want too many harsh lines going through her face from the buildings. We're going to correct that anyway, but uh, just to show you an example, this building here, this lighter building is creating a pretty harsh line that goes right through the middle of her face. So I just sort of move that out of the way, put some of the darker buildings over her face instead, and then go ahead and uh, drop that once I know the position I want it in. And of course this is way too prevalent, so we're going to click on here and just turn the opacity of this down. And I turned it between somewhere between 10 and 20 percent. I think somewhere around 15 percent is best. And so this already looks pretty good. It, it almost already looks like a reflection. There's a few other things we got to do to really bring this home. So next I'm going to click on this layer again, go to colors, levels, and I'm going to drag this black triangle which represents the dark pixels in our image to the right. And basically this is just making our image darker which is just hiding a little bit more of the details from the buildings. So here's a before and an after. We don't want to get rid of too many details, but we also don't want that background image to be too prevalent. So you got to find a good balance there and then go ahead and click OK. Once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this city layer. So now we have two, but I'm going to click on this one and go to colors, desaturate, desaturate, and I'm going to desaturate this based on luminance. And that's basically just going to create a black and white version of our city. And then I'm going to click on the layer mode again, and this time I'm going to change this to screen. And what the screen mode does is it takes out all of the black pixels in our image. So if I hide this, there's a before and an after. If I hide everything else besides this, you can see this is what this looks like. It's a black and white image. And I'll just turn this back down. 
and then unhide these layers here. And so the function of this layer is to highlight the parts of our building that are still showing. So this layer, we kind of adjusted so only certain parts of the buildings are showing in the reflection so it's not uh, too overly prominent. But then what this layer is doing is sort of bringing out those buildings that we wanted to keep in the reflection without really uh, bringing too much detail into the parts of the reflection that we don't want to show. But right now as it stands, this is bringing back some of the details in this reflection that we don't want in there. So to adjust that, I'm going to go to Colors, Levels again. And this time I'm just going to constrict the output levels here. So if I bring this black triangle to the right, you'll see that my image gets brighter. And if I bring this right white triangle to the left, you'll see my image will start to get a little bit darker. And this is just basically constricting the output range of highlights. So basically pixels that are brighter than this color right here will no longer be included in the image. And that just makes our image darker. So here's a before and here's an after. So I'll click OK. And here's before and after with this effect here. So you can see that our brighter buildings that we kept in the reflection are now a little bit more pronounced. So the next thing I want to do with these reflections is right now they're a little bit too crisp in the window. So I want to blur them a little bit, but I don't want to blur them too much. So I'll go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to keep the setting at 1.5 for X and Y because I don't want to blur this too much. And I'll click OK. So that blurred our top city layer. I'm going to blur the layer below it. And I'm just going to come to filters and repeat Gaussian blur, or you can hit control F on your keyboard. And that's going to repeat that effect. So now these buildings have a little bit of blur to them, but nothing too intense. And now what I want to do is add sort of a light shift to our subject here, because usually windows have a little bit of tint on them and they sort of shift the light anyway. So we're going to add a little bit of a green tint to her. So I'm going to click on this layer here and I'm going to duplicate it. And then on our duplicated layer, I'm going to come over to Colors, Colorize. And now we could select whatever color we want. I'm going to click on this color and just drag this down a little bit to get a little bit more of a green color. I'll go with that color right there and click OK. And OK again. Now that's obviously way too prevalent, so I'm going to change the layer mode of this to Overlay. And then I'm going to go ahead and decrease the opacity of this. So I just want sort of a green tint. I don't want to overdo anything. So there's a before and there's an after. I'm going to come back over to the original layer here. This photo is a little bit dark now for my taste. So what I'm going to do is go to Colors, Levels, and just brighten this up slightly. I don't want to overdo it. So there's a before and there's an after. So I just brightened it up a tiny bit. And now the last thing we're going to do is add a gradient to the bottom here just to emulate sort of where the window would end and maybe a wall would begin. So it's going to cut the light off a tiny bit and it's just going to help frame our image as well. So I'll come up to the top, create a new layer, and I've already got this name gradient, and I'll fill with transparency and click OK. And I'll come over here to my gradient tool. And right now I have this set to foreground and transparent. And I'll set the shape to linear here. And then I'll go ahead and click and draw and I'll hold the control key to put this in straight line mode. And I'm just going to put that about right there. And we can sort of play around with this if you're in 2.10.4 like I am, or really just 2.10 and above, you can live edit your gradient here. So that looks pretty good to me, so I'll hit the enter key, and there you go. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com, and you can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.